Let me read this brief announcement I, that's mandatory here. My name is Greg Higgins, Chair of the Natural Resources Commission, and I'm calling this meeting, this public meeting, uh, together at 7 p.m. on May 20th, 2020. The Commission will re review wetland filings under the Mass Wetlands Protection Act and the Concord Wetland Bylaw. Discussion at tonight's meeting will be limited to regulatory matters only. Uh, we are recording, and if you wish to record as a participant, please let the chair know. And I might warn you, or it's not a warning exactly, but I believe um, Zoom records all these too, and some people may have access to that via that. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order of March 12, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually. To ensure public access to the deliberations of the meeting, the public may access this call through video conferencing or by telephone. Following the presentation of the petitioner, and questions from the Commission. Members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment. If you wish to provide feedback, you will need to raise your hand. If you are video conferencing, go to the participants tab at the bottom of the screen and click on it. Once it's opened, go to, and click on the, There's a hand there. It will throw up the hands and, and we will see your hand up and calling. The chair will call on you and your mic will be unmuted by the host. Please identify yourself by your name and address for the record. You can also raise your hand from your phone by dialing pound nine. If you haven't already done so, please identify yourself on the screen, which I think everyone has, and I appreciate that. Uh, you do this by clicking on the three, three uh, dots as I mentioned. All video screens will be turned off with the exception of the commission, Delia and the current petitioner. Delia and the current petitioner. Once the commission has acted on an application, of course, the, commission, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. Screen sharing will not be allowed unless uh, formally requested uh, through Delia. In the event that this meeting is Zoom bombed, we're not going to get, and we lose control, uh, um, we are not coming back. All matters on the agenda will, that have not been heard will automatically be pinned to the June 3, 2020 NRC meeting. All votes will be by roll call. And at this time, uh, I will ask the commissioners to introduce themselves by name. Uh, Ed? Ed Nardi. Nick? Nick Pappas. And uh, Judy? Judy Zombrecker. Thank you. And I'm Judy Zombrecker. Lynn Huggins is not able to be with us this evening. All right. Um, just uh, to be continued. To be opened, uh, who wants to make a motion, if you wouldn't mind, Ed, on uh, sure. 141 Comfort? Yeah, I'll make a motion to open and continue to the June 3rd uh, meeting, 141 Comfort Road. Uh, it does not have a DP file number yet. Okay. Um, do second. I have a second? Second. Okay, we have to roll Judy. call this. Uh, Nick? Aye. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Continuing on, we have a continuation. Uh, I'll make a motion to continue uh, 43 Old Bedford Road, DEP file number 137-1504 to the June 3rd, 2020 hearing. Need a second. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Roll call again, Judy. Aye. Ed? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I'm I as well. All right, starting this evening's meeting, the first um, topic will be a DEP file number 137 1522, uh, 369, 38A, and 40A Commonwealth Ave. Who is here who wishes to speak for this petition? Uh, my name is uh, Alex Patterson from ESS Group. Uh, can everyone hear me? I certainly can. Okay, yes. great. Um, so I think we have several people uh, on the call this evening for this. I'll just um, give a brief sort of overview and then I'll turn it over to Kate Hodge from the town of Concord. Um, so um, this project uh, is a town project. The town of Concord is the applicant. Um, the engineering and landscaping design firm is GPI, and uh, the firm that I work with, ESS, um, prepared and filed the NOI application. Um, I'm sure uh, 
uh, all the commissioners are familiar with the site. Um, this is located on the northern shoreline of Warner's Pond, um, in the western part of town, uh, just west of Commonwealth Avenue and just to the south of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, <clears throat> just a very brief sort of summary of the project. Um, this is a you know proposed municipal recreation facility uh, consisting of um, two buildings, an event barn and a restroom facility, uh, a system of walking trails and um, associated parking, utilities, stormwater management and uh, vegetation management throughout the site. Um, in terms of uh, areas that are within the commission's jurisdiction, there's work that will occur within the bordering land subject to flooding resource area as well as the 25 foot no disturb zone, 50 foot no build zone, and the remainder of the 100 foot buffer zone associated with uh, BVW and Inland Bank um, adjacent to Warner's Pond. Um, so uh, I think Kate Hodge is planning to give uh, an overview of sort of the project goals and then uh, the GPI team will provide a, a more detailed description of the project. Um, and then I will likely conclude with uh, a, uh, a brief discussion of the work within the uh, various jurisdictional areas. Yeah, it's the jurisdictional areas that we are most uh, interested in, but please, I'd love to hear the presentation. Uh, thank you to the commission for taking the time to hear from us. Um, Kate Hodges, I'm the deputy town manager. The community and the town have been working on this particular property and believe that the plan schematics and renditions that you will see this evening best represent the highest and best use for the property as both primarily open space and passive recreational parks, um, particular, particular to West Concord. Its proximity to Warner's Pond, West Concord Center, and the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail were all major considerations in planning. Um, the planning portion of this took about a year and a half. <clears throat> Confident that this plan represents nearly all of the aspects in which the community conveyed to us during our needs assessment and master planning and visionary sessions, including maintaining uh, tree bound landscaping, um, making sure that there are open access to um, at least the water's overview and um, having some sustainable uh, both plantings and infrastructure, which we've done both in the stormwater management and with the composting toilet idea. Um, Ryan Kane, recreation director, and Ryan Orr, our facilities director, are also both on this call. And um, I will also remain in the audience during GPI's presentation to help answer any questions that the commission may have. And we appreciate NRC's time to hear from us this evening. Thank you, Kate. Okay, I'll, I'll pick up from here. This is Robert White with the GPI. And I'm wondering, can we go to the view and do it at full screen? Because we need to advance some oh, slides. Yeah, the host asked you to start your video. What? Am I not on video? That's all right. Okay. I believe you there. We don't necessarily have to see you if you want to just continue I, on. I've clicked on video, so. Um, so. Is he being blocked? No. Okay. No, you're here. I'm here. Okay. So just let me know where you would like to go and I will. Okay. So let's just, um, can you go to, can you, uh, under view on the upper left, can you hit view and then there's a, a f uh, full screen mode? If that's possible, then then we'll have the full frames of the images. Keep going, keep going down, keep going. All right there, yeah, if you can see yeah. it. There we go. Perfect. So you can advance for me. Tell me where you want to be. Click. So there's Alex. Click again. There's Kate. And Alex, again, so I'm going to, uh, one more slide. So I'm just going to walk you through uh, the existing site and the, and the proposed plan that we have uh, advanced in this application. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the Bureau property acquired by the town that we, as we would see it today. 
And so you can see basically on the right, sort of diagonal is Commonwealth Avenue. We have about a thousand feet of, of uh, shoreline uh, along Warner's Pond. Uh, wonderful, and that's really the main event for when people come to this location uh, to have the wonderful views of the uh, of the pond from the meadows and through the woods, and uh, enormous uh, wildlife and other interests of the pond. Uh, the site has really uh, three different areas. The right area is sort of an emergent uh, uh, shoreline of the pond over in there. In the upper right, there is the entrance area to the Bruce Freeman uh, Rail Trail with a parking facility that was developed in uh, relationship with the town and Mass DOT. Uh, diagonally or, or sweeping across the site will be the continuation of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. In the center, there is the site of the former uh, Juro home which is basically sort of a grassy uh, hilltop uh, area sloping down uh, mostly towards the pond, but a portion of it slopes backwards towards Bruce Freeman. And then to the left of that, we have a mixed, uh, a mixed woodland. You can see there's quite a bit of evergreens in there. And then the site keeps going. Uh, we don't have really any parts of the project that are going further to the left, but you go, in, you go out of the evergreen mixed woodlands into more of a, uh, a deciduous uh, ridge line uh, over in that area. And in the upper upper corner is the very edge of the huge farm fields that you see as you're coming in on Route 2 heading towards the uh, <coughs> traffic circle. So the red lines on this represent the jurisdictional lines of your uh, resu uh, review uh, zones. And so that'll be a constant through some of the other graphics that we'll show. Okay, next slide. <coughs> So these are just some character images of the site, the existing driveway to the Giro residence on the top there, and a portion of some of the uh, landscape that was associated with the house on the bottom with cedar hedges and the lawn area, just the tail end of the lawn area on the right. Next slide. The Bruce Freeman Rail Trail and parking lot is an existing use, a pattern of uses, people coming to the area. And then also within the site itself, there's uh, a fairly uh, robust visitation of people using informal pathways. They're sort of uh, threading their way and really telling us that people like walking along the, uh, along the uh, views of the lake. So you can see on the sort of left part of that image, there's a bit of a beaten path of, uh, of some of the informal walkways that are out there. And give, just give you a sense of sort of the mixed shoreline. The far right there would be basically vegetated buffer uh, a uh, fairly dense vegetated buffer in that location of, uh, along the pond's edge. <coughs> and then here's the main event, the, the rolling lawn from the, uh, the, house, uh, the house site would be at the top of that hill in the upper slide with the uh, lawns going down into the lake and then in the wooded area uh, uh, below, again, even in the, in the winter anyways, you can see all the way in the, when the leaves are down, you can see all the way out to the lake. I think it's probably a little more obscured now and through the summer. Okay. And so this is the overall plan. This is a pictorial view of some of the drawings that you have uh, in your application package. And I'll just very quickly go through the ma major pieces. In the upper right is the park entrance drive that's going to be shared with the entrance drive to the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. The white little ladder there is where we cross the rail trail with uh, basically a crossing point. And then we come into a driveway where we have um, on one side or the other, we have parking uh, associated with the park activities and uh, really trying to minimize the appearance of it being sort of a parking lot. So that's why it's sort of single loaded. And then at the end of the parking is the recreational facility with two buildings strung together with sort of a covered porch. The larger one to the left is the event barn and then just diagonally to the right uh, is a smaller bathroom building that has uh, that will feature clevis multrum composting toilets in the basement or the the vaults will be in the basement so there's a whole sustainable part of that um, with the event barn and public and social spaces for activities to the left of that is sort of a hairpin shape uh, for woodland trails those are more sort of uh, 
more sort of a natural looking path uh, with, a, with a hard pack surface through the woods, threading through the woods there. Um, and then there's a series of looping trails uh, through the rest uh, that are either hard pack for the thinner weight, weight ones or, um, or, or bituminous for the more, what we anticipated would be the more heavier traveled uh, trails. Um, <clears throat> through the middle is sort of across the hilltop and then the one sort of down and to the right uh, heading is over towards the shoreline. So that's basically the layout of everything that we have within the project proposal. I would note a couple things. The playground on the right there is where this, this phase of the project will build the walkway around it and designate the area. We won't be actually installing the uh, playground equipment or you know really programming that, that activity yet. And then over on the left, there are, um, I want to be clear about this is, is, um, is we envision, and part of the reason that we are at this location is that people want to get to the water. In fact, the town may be considering bringing uh, boat access from a public boat launch that's over on the other side of Warner Pond over to this location. And so we've included um, a future carry-in boat access for sort of a, a gangplank and, uh, and boat launching uh, uh, raft and and there are various ways that we're trying to deal with the accessibility issue of getting out to that location and then the semicircle just above that right outside of the 50 foot line uh, buffer line that, that you'll see in a minute is is a place for boats to be stored on uh, sort of vertical racks um, for convenience for you know people to bring their boat or have it for the season or maybe there are town on boats that are uh, used there. So that's an overall layout of the project as a whole. Next slide. So this is just a quick review of the different of the plan relative to your review zones. So, <clears throat> so in the first 25 feet from basically from the shoreline to the 25 feet is in the current application we have no uh, alterations or disturbance in that area in, in our application. You see um, I'm, I'm we're trying to be transparent that we will be coming in the future for the consideration of the shoreline access over there on the left, but that's not a part of this application, but we want you to know that that is something that we have in mind. So basically we're free and clear for the first 25 feet uh, through the site. There is one area where it says shoreline pathway and pond overlook in the, in the middle there. We do have some erosion on the shore of the pond, we'd like uh, to take a look at that with you for some consideration that we might need to, we might, it might be in everyone's interest to have that uh, revegetated with, with some, just some raking it out and probably some plantings to support that. But it's really, that's a point of discussion and, and really to, you know, get your sense about uh, the desirability of that. Um, so, and then uh, from the 25 to the 50, which would be the next here. Next slide. So this area here that with the oval there, that is an area where we have a portion of the project, a, a trail and an overlook, a, 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 a paved trail and an overlook that goes into the, uh, between the 25 and 50 foot zone. If I could just interrupt you for a half a second here. Yeah. I see four lines. Yes. 25, Correct. 50, and 100. What's the fourth line? The, the, the furthest line towards the water is the basically the top of the bank line that's around, okay. around the okay. lake. So that's not okay. the water line. It's so that, that's a, that, that is all within the 25 is what that is. Yeah, so yes. From, yeah. From okay. The, I just wanted to. Thank you. We've had four different conversations about that through the course of the day, just trying to make sure we we're clear about it. So, um, thank you. Well, this would be a good time to be clear about it. Thank you. Good. Good. This is, <laughs> so that so this is the extent of our um, of our looking at the 25 to 50 foot area in terms of a built object. Over on the right, you see we also have notes in this area that we begin after 25 feet to really want to get a handle on some of the invasive. Uh, honeysuckle that is off to the right of that area. Um, but again, that's a point of discussion in terms of our means and methods. Uh, and uh, some of the honeysuckle that are out there, you actually 
worth the trip to go take a look at them. They are huge. So, um, so that, that is within the 25 to 50 zone, um, uh, but that's basically not a built element, it's basically vegetation management. So next slide. Now we're in the 50 to 100 foot zone. So we're picking up basically the rest of the sort of uh, pond side of the ridge of the site for the trail system. And then off on the left there, uh, basically a placeholder for the semicircle space where the canoe storage would go. So that's basically a review of the three different uh, sort of jurisdictional zones that, you, uh, that you'll that you be looking at and making decisions about. The, the data that's all associated with those is in Alex's submission, all the calculations and everything. There's one last one here. One more slide. So this is the area of stormwater. And we are trying to do something uh, new and different here, uh, really having stormwater look like a natural landscape, uh, yet to have it still fulfill all of the functional requirements of a modern stormwater um, permitting process. So our team has worked uh, with, you know, both within our own team, multidisciplinary team, as well as with public works folks who have done sort of, uh, not peer review, but review basically of our methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, for stormwater. So the upper part there, which is just above the parking, that's basically the collection point for all the stormwater off the road in the parking in pretreatment of Four Bay. And that is sort of a, uh, you know, sort of a grassy swales uh, going into a conveyance place right where it says parking. It then goes under the parking lot and goes into a whole treatment detention and infiltration area that's all through there. So we're looking for sort of a natural aesthetic the, uh, of, of sort of uh, wet meadows and native species that, that are sort of surrounding the stormwater areas. And so the last point I would make just relative to the environment out here is, is um, this is a very unusual site because once you scratch the surface of the ground, you go through the leaves and you go through, uh, you know, four, three or four inches of organic material we have 10 feet of the most beautiful beach sand that you've ever seen. And so we have a highly uh, um, um, permeable uh, site in terms of stormwater infiltration and drainage. So it makes it quite unique. Uh, we haven't actually, other than shore, you know, like oceanside projects, we haven't dealt with a sort of inland uh, beach like this, but it's, um, it's a wonderful opportunity. We don't have to do any blasting and and uh, we don't have uh, you know difficult drainage challenges here. Um, so, anyways, I think I think I should probably wrap up. And, and I think there's one more slide. Oh, this is what the building looks like. Just a just a quick picture. The event barn is on the right, the larger structure, and the bathroom building is on the left. That is outside of the hundred foot uh, review zone, but just wanted you to have a sense of what we're after something appropriate uh, to the setting, the sort of uh, uh, rural landscape setting of the pond shore. So we did get some early indications of some things that you might want to uh, discuss with us, and we're certainly glad to talk about those things. We don't have responses to all of them, but these as points of discussion, plus uh, your thoughts, questions, concerns, we'll go from there. Well, thank you very much. Um, nice job. Uh, in terms of um, phasing this, so we get a, con a, a complete idea of what it, what we're going to do here eventually. By the way, how many acres are, is this seven acres? Is that what it is? Yep. 7.2. Yep. Okay, so it's about, it's about 25% less than the size of Emerson Playground, just to get a, a sense of it, correct? Um, Phase one, phase two. So phase two, I don't know if you call them that, but would just be a, uh, the boat dock and a ramp for the boat. Let me, let me. Uh, I mean, you, and, and there's land. I'm trying to get a comprehensive thought as to what's this going to look like in 10 years when it's, yeah. quotes, matured as a recreational facility. Right. What, what have we not talked about that might go there in your plan? Everything that is in these plans uh, was developed, uh, the, there was initial development in a master plan process. 
and we developed some initial plans and then had uh, staff review, uh, extensive staff review. And I would say that almost everything changed after staff review. We, we really became, uh, uh, Delia was very clear and effective in communicating to us the, the, the hierarchy of the different zones of review and the, and the conditions upon which you'd be looking at those. And so this has really been designed, uh, sort of uh, the design tweaked to fit all of those different areas of the different boundaries of your review consideration. What I would before say relative this, to phasing is before this time, um, Greg, we had sort of a boardwalk that was running along the shoreline uh -huh. um, with pylons that were going in, and we had sort of a fishing pier on the opposite end of where you can see the future boat launch. And so, yeah, yeah. We, we've gotten rid of that. There was a lot of um, community response and folks that wanted that. Um, it was around the time that we were just finding out that we had uh, we were going to acquire White Pond as an asset, and so that kind of changed people feeling like they didn't have a public place necessarily that they could have a public bathing beach where they could right. boat and fish, et cetera. And so that changed that. The only thing that I can say that it, you don't see on here that may or may not uh, 10 years from now is there still seems to be a strong community desire to swim in Warner's Pond, Warner's Pond. And that obviously can't happen um, without, you know, dredging being completed and, and whatnot. But when you're talking about 10 years down the road, you know, I'm not sure if that's still going to be a community um, idea. I have to tell you, when pricing out, it's very expensive. And I'm not sure, since we have the ability to swim in White Pond, whether that would be something that the entire community would think is, is worth the, the money. But as far as we are right now, um, we're pretty much stopping. Um, perhaps the playground area could perhaps be a gazebo or a band shell, depending on what the community wants and that boat access is is going to be key and you'll see that coming up but other than that um you know i i just i'm not sure that the rate of return you would get for the money to put into a beach would be worth it personally but it's up to the community right and and the the um thank you uh in terms of the far left or the west far west end that is expected to just l let it go natural as as it is today? We're hoping to blaze um, some trails in there and, and work with the trails committee on that. There, as um, as uh, Robert showed, there's some unofficial trails that are there that are actually really well done. And so if we're able to just kind of clean those up and, and do a loop around, I suspect that as people start to use phase 2B of Bruce Freeman, there will probably be some more unofficial trails <laughs> that are blazed down through it. So I think it mm -hmm. might be good to do a watch and wait type of thing and see, you know, how people are gravitating there. But it, there wouldn't be any formal construction. Everything would be you know, dirt, dirt paths only, no railings, no nothing. In the narrative, it 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 lists 52 parking spaces, and in the I can only count 32 on the plan. <laughs> The 52 is including the 17 out on the Bruce Freeman wheel, uh, trail. Oh, and how did we, we come up with a number of 52? I, I'm trying to I, I, yep. cut to the chase. I'm trying to figure out how did you come up with that? What's going to be, uh, the, the, what kind of crowd, what kind of impact are we having here? We've got trails going into the 50, uh, which you know, maybe we can live with, but let's find out what, what are we talking about here in right. terms of impact? We, we have no, uh, in our what, properties that we yeah, control, sure. we have nothing that comes close to that kind of impact. And this is, and we have properties that are 100 acres. Uh, right. We park nine cars. So right. it's, right. It, I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen to the shoreline, et cetera, just to get a picture of, of that impact. Can you help me with that? Yeah, sure. So there's a couple different points that, that one can consider that. One of which is we took an area of the site that we were comfortable placing parking and we put the parking in there. And we let the site tell us how much parking was really appropriate to have and fit and feel comfortable. Now that's sort of an intuitive side of it, but, but it is letting the site sort of speak for itself about like how much room we have uh, and, you know, basically we have a long, rather slender site with the Bruce Freeman Trail on one side. We have the ridge line and we need to fit uh, the parking and stormwater and then preserve the ridge. So that was, that was one approach. 
We also looked at the utilization of the, the event barn became a bit of a driver of use because at its size at uh, 30 by 50 feet, the, the code occupancy of that building is as much as 100 people. And we figured that most people coming to an event there um, probably would be with somebody else. And so that gave us a rather, you know, a, a rather co a convenient relationship of two people per car coming to event there, an, a, a full occupancy event there at the barn, and that we would have that. And then we were just thinking about the comings and goings of families coming for maybe a reunion. And, um, you know, that I, I have to say that the calculation of parking was a, a, a bit as much as an art as it was a science. So we relied on the occupancy rate of the biggest generator of uses, which is the event barn. And then we, re and then we basically looked at, uh, you know, use patterns and the capacity of the site to really absorb and um, so are, 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 am, am I to gather from what you, you're, you're saying that uh, uh, the event barn is the draw and, and all, the, all the trails are, are not counted? No, no, in no, that? no. It just, it seems to me, well, okay. Yep. It, it was, uh, Greg, can I just, uh, is Ryan Kane here somewhere? Ryan He's hiding Kane. out, I saw him. <laughs> Ryan Kane, um, uh, before we even had the event barn as something, um, was very, very interested in having a component of the recreation programming that related to nature and trail um, exploration and, and classes. And that's sort of where we came up with the amount of spaces that may be needed for drop in, drop off. And I just was hoping Ryan could, could talk to you a little about that so you could understand because that is a, that's a very large trail component. Sure, you able to hear me, Greg? I can, Ryan. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ryan Kane, Director of Recreation. Um, I think just when you're looking at the parking spots, Greg, I think it's a multifaceted use park is a major component. You know, we don't want to have, um, I'm going to use the Kane family here, the Kane family reunion there on a Saturday and totally engulf the park. And that's all that's happening there. We still want the community to have access to the park, either walk the trails. Um, enjoy the area so it, it encompasses being able to use the Bruce Freeman trail people be able to come out and walk the trails people be able to come out and picnic and just hang out there in the um, barn being used simultaneously that that incorporates a community wide so you know our vision on a, on the event component of it is if somebody had an event there that's not closing the park um, the, the park is still open and they're using it in an open park uh, additionally, what Kate is talking about, it, where the the in, initiative came from the, for the uh, event barn is we were talking about doing, you know, uh, nature-based programming down there for recreation, and what we would need some type of shelter and some type of pavilion. And it started to grow as we're going to build a pavilion. Why don't we make it more worthwhile seven days a week to more people in the community than just uh, a rec program component of it? Um, and so that's where we started to drive. But to me, just on the park and spot end, I just think it being a multifaceted park. That, that enables it to happen. So again, if it, it doesn't shut out the rest of the community if someone's using the event barn. Uh, well, it, it keeps the facility open. Oh, go Nick, go ahead. Yeah, um, let's see, coming off of this is, diverges too much from what the commission's doing here, but <clears throat> I really have some questions about an event barn that might be turned into events that have nothing to do with recreation. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be judging what you're proposing here for the site and the impact on the uh, the wetlands, uh, the bordering wetlands, and I'm concerned about traffic. I'm concerned about terms like family reunions, and you know, I mean, the purpose of the site was supposed to be recreation and enjoyment of nature, right? So the site master plan has always always had. Uh, pavilions, you know, bu buildings for some people that, uh, who are there for a recreational activity or, you know, a group activity or just there as a family. We have the ability to get undercover. And so really the, the event barn is a seasonal structure. Um, it's not a year round structure. And, and that was, in, and as, as Ryan said, it was a major portion of that was to have, you know, basically nature-based education and recreation programs for the kids. As, as well. So the, the actual function of it as an event barn and, you know, whether it's family reunions or, um, you know, a community gathering, uh, you know, a summer picnic of the, 
Natural Resources Commission, um, you know, something like that for, for uses um, is, uh, you know, so what happens is that we do get a bump in the, in the requirement for um, occupancy because of the size of the structure. And we've been tinkering with that a little bit, but it's, you know, basically it's 30 by 50 plus the covered spaces. And so that drove a number at, you know, up towards uh, about 100 people. But that's not going to be the normal, um, the normal, uh, the norm of activities out there. The vast majority of use we see on the site is people coming to take a walk, to sit out on the shore, bring a paint, you know, bring their easel and paint and watch the amazing flocks of uh, snow geese in the fall. And, you know, it, it is a recreational site within which we have placed um, some structures to expand the use and enjoyment of it, but not to have them dominate. I think, well, I think the monkey that may be on your back, Ryan, a little bit is maybe a management plan. Obviously, our purpose, I, I like the site. And I'm not trying to be negative Nelly here whatsoever, but I think our function here is to, is to um, obviously ensure that the, that the 100 feet, certainly the first 50 from the shore, it, you know, isn't adversely uh, affected by what we do here as a town. And I think maybe um, so a little bit of a management thought thinking into how, do, how you're going to manage the 75 people that come to the to the uh, exhibit that somebody's done of wildlife photography, let's say in the pavilion, yeah. which right. could be a community event without question. And also the folks riding by the Bruce Freeman rail trail at that time going, hey, there's a pond down here, let's go look, plus all the right. people from the town who right. just went there to look at the pond and launch a boat, a kayak or something yeah. like that. It just, we, we may be talking about a management plan that I haven't seen or talk, heard anybody talk about it, how you'd discipline this so that we didn't have, you know, uh, uh, abuse of the, of the uh, uh, buffer zone. Right. Are you with me, Ryan? Yes. Uh, and I would say to GPI's credit, you know, when we first brought it up, you know, we, we were envisioning different locations and, and where they placed it location wise was to kind of tuck it into the back. So it didn't take away I from agree. the components of it and, and the components of the park and didn't overcrowd the water uh, components. So, um, it's definitely designed to kind of, you know, not take away from the, the park within it to kind of be in addition to the park, uh, within yeah. it. Uh, but I think it's the kind of thing where, how are you going, is it going to be by permit use, obviously used by recreation, but used by individual citizens and groups by permit and therefore that would give you control over July 4th and that sort of thing. Yes, yes, it would be it would be by permit similar to what we do with um, anybody that wants to run an event or anything like that. Work. But so it, one of the one other step. Things, one of the, oops, sorry. One of the other things that was important is that when we were looking at this, we, we were getting a lot of community feedback that people liked to snowshoe, cross country skiing, and perhaps um, uh, ice skating. And we were thinking, you know, if we're going to program that and and by default allow it sort of to be um, a public place to do that, it would behoove us to have a place where people could at least get out of harsh weather should one storm or another roll in. Yeah. And so that's where we had the idea of this large pavilion. And um, this is an unheated, uh, no water, no, no frills type of thing. So as much as um, the Kane family, should they want to have their reunion, would have to carry in their brown bag lunch and then carry yeah. it out. They. Uh, they're not going to have any cooking facilities or anything um, there, and so I'm not. I'm not sure. Just we can probably accommodate a hundred people. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, um, highly sought after for that kind of thing. I think we're thinking more of, you know, partnering with the umbrella for things like you said, the uh, wildlife exhibits and, and things like that. Things that really kind of build into the park. Um, but yes, you're right. Uh, recreation would manage that just like they do rentals of, you know, hunt and, and any other facility that they have. So the other the other perspective that I would offer is that we the plans the plans for parking and the driveway and everything were the were the same. We just added the barn to the building picture. So we have always envisioned that there would be a level of uses out there that the 37 car parking. Oh, yeah. Plus, 
the possible you know use of the uh, of the uh, Bruce Freeman um, rail trail parking, and there is a little bit of expansion parking options over um, uh, even in association with, in cooperation with the Correctional Institute uh, over past the Bruce Freeman um, parking. So we actually have a little bit of a pool of parking that could be available. Yeah, for I, I think our I think of use. My my point, can... Robert. Just so. Oh, go ahead, Judy. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I guess as we were talking about the parking, my question and concern would be about having a lot of parking there. That you have so many people at one time regularly using that site that it starts to degrade the natural resources on those sites uh, at that site. And as I understood, part of the reason that this site was purchased was for people to enjoy both the natural resources and that we, as a natural resource commission, want to make sure that the natural resources there are protected. The more parking that's available could lead to overuse on a regular basis and degrade that. And, and I guess so while, I under, while I understand that, um, Judy, we had um, just many, many, many um, sort of impromptu meetings with um, you know the community, people in West Concord, West Concord Business District, and then we had the public hearings. And people were thinking of this as a hybrid between what their um, what the uh, conventional NRC properties are, which is just the trails and, and things like that, and, and, an, and a full-blown recreation facility such as ride out. And what they're looking for is sort of a hybrid of, of both of that. And so we have to sort of plan for that. Um, we've got a lot of community interest in having, you know, something at the forefront of the property that includes, you know, a playground or something like that. And so there might be people there that are coming just to enjoy the natural landscape and the trails and, and so that, that would encompass, you know, probably one half of the parking, but there's people that want to come there for other reasons as well. Fishing was a big one, as was boating. And so I think we need to, th there's not a lot of NRC properties, you know, that people are pulling up to in there, either going hiking, boating, or playing on a playground. And so I think we need to keep that in mind. Yeah, I appreciate that, Kate. My, my concern is, is that as we had learned over at White Pond, as you uh, have a lot of people come, that they may not understand their impact on shorelines as they do bivouac through woods to go fishing. And that maybe speaks to the management plan that Greg is talking about. But I do continue to have a concern, the more parking spaces one has, that the more people are there and the places and the part that is the responsibility of the NRC, which is within the jurisdictional area, becomes degraded because there's too many people using it and perhaps people using it inappropriately. I appreciate that, some, that there will be parts that are passive recreation playgrounds, but there is a significant portion that is within the NRC purview, and we want to protect that as the town has wanted as we pass the bylaw. Yeah, I, I, I just think a little bit of uh, thinking about the paths and thinking about, about um, how we can have, everyone can have a good time there and, and, and uh, understand that there are sensitive area, more sensitive areas there right. um, that need a management plan. And I think, I'm sure Ryan can figure it out. He's done many of these kinds of things. So I'm sure if, if you think about it, we, 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 will, uh, we can do this. We're, you're also taking down, uh, obviously, you have to clear a path to make a path, uh, which means you have to take down some vegetation and that, what have you. Uh, customarily, uh, I think you know that we would, you know, require that uh, any trees over a, a maybe a six or so uh, base um, uh, would be identified on the plan, so we'd have a sense of what came down. And it, in a brief discussion that um, I had with Delia, we talked about it and said, well, okay, obviously we don't want to just go and pick every tree to over six on the whole Bloomin property as an exercise, but it, would it be possible to monitor those trails and find out are there any significant, have you done that and to see if there's any significant trees that would be in jeopardy that you might have to bend yep. and, and have that in the plan so a contractor doesn't yep. look at you and say, well, this is what I bid on, this is where I got to go on it, right. and the 24 inch maple's got to come. So if you've done that wonderfully, let us know. Do you want me to speak to that a little bit or? Well, anybody that wants to speak to it would be uh, so, welcomed, Robert. Yeah, so we, so we have a layout of trails. The, the trails that are primarily in the woods is the sort of hairpin 
Is it possible to bring the drawings back up? Yeah, the hairpin, I got it. So the hairpin is basically the, the, the area of trail. And then there's a little loop to, uh, between the uh, bathroom building going uh, towards the pond. So those are the trails that are in the wooded setting. And um, so we have an alignment of the trails that we've uh, sketched out and we've looked at it on the ground to avoid a lot of, you know, avoid major grading for the trails, things like that. We do have to um, uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, oh, back, back one. Right there. Next one. Oops, that one there. So, um, so the so the left part of this is ma the majority of the hairpin. So that basically threads through the wood. So you know. What we would do in a situation like these trails is, is there's a mechanical layout, a geometric layout for the center line of these trails, but, but the majority of that trail is, is, you know, has flexibility in its location uh, uh, in, in the wooded setting. And so you know, now we define uh, a 15 foot window through which the trails would pass. We obviously, you know, we don't in most cases need to clear, we certainly don't need 15 feet of clearing through the woods to fit a five foot trail. So, so there is flexibility built within that. Um, we have walked those woods and what I would say is that they're, the, woods, the woods are fairly typical second or third generation forests. There are no major landmark trees in this portion. There are definitely landmark trees further to the left if we continue down the ridge, there are wonderful, huge oak trees, um, all of which are not, you know, part of any of this, of this construction and in the informal footpaths or, you know, sort of walking or hiking trails that might be over in there are basically, you know, going to be non-impacting in terms of cutting any trees. So we could certainly look at the hairpin area for the area, you know, for the amount of uh, clearing that would be associated with that. And if there is anything outstanding, we can certainly note it for, uh, you know, for an avoidance strategy and, and for it passing that trail through the forest. On the lower part in the return, if you move your hand down and to the right a little bit. So we do have a little bit of grading and more clearing in the, for the overlook there um, to the left, more to the left, you're right there. So there's a little more clearing there. That is in uh, fairly open woods. And I think once we remove, once we give these woods a, a bit of a shave and a haircut, um, there's a lot of standing dead. And, and you know, once we give it a shave and a haircut, I think the actual removal of, of uh, actual living trees should be uh, able to be um, minimized. Okay. The two areas to the right of that are part of the stormwater area. And so the trails in those locations, because we have uh, basically a stormwater design, we have to, we're raising the elevation to somewhat degree that the trail that sort of cuts across those two right there, that's, that's a little bit of a causeway. It's elevated slightly uh, above the level of the ground for the trail surface uh, material. Um, but those are basically the partition um, components of the stormwater situation. But we're really relying on the native uh, environment there to basically manage the stormwater. Uh, we have a highly pervia, uh, pervious uh, subbase in the soils. Water is not going to hang around there very long. It's going to basically soak into the ground uh, or to whatever degree stormwater goes through. So we're in, envisioning that you know large areas of the forest are going to re remain as forested, and then we're just looking at cutting ribbons for the paths to go through. Um, in, in terms of um, the usage. Um, on the site for on these trails, could you just explain there there are multiple trails and and the one out to the west the, the the hairpin as you say that sounds to me as if it's clearly a walking trail I, I could be wrong, please correct me so, and the other trails i'm 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 thinking about what do you envision on these trails in terms of what kind of usage bicycles uh wheelchairs yeah. um motorbikes, whatever. 
So we laid out all the trails to meet standards that would for accessibility. That's a, that's a good one, yeah. And, and, uh, and, but we have designed, we use different materials for them depending on the level of use that we're going to, that we're imagining to use. So we are not, and I, guess, um, I wish I could point on this. Can you give me control of a pointer? Can you do that, uh, Celia? I have control, but it's not good. What do I do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, one second. Well, let me let, let's just keep the discussion, Robert. Yeah, that's fine. Are you envisioning having some of these bicycle these trails have bicycle riders? No, the only bicycle travel we see is in the upper part above the recreation. That, that fork coming in off so of Bruce there's Freeman. There's a V there that that connects up to the Bruce Freeman. Okay. So okay. that V there down yep. to the bicycle racks is where we are really setting that up for bicycle use. So the rest of this is people that would be walking with their families, jogging yep. maybe. Uh, wheelchair, uh, things like that, but no yeah. vehicular things uh, and no bicycles. So it is a, a passive, when you say the amount of traffic, the weight of the traffic, you're not talking about the weight of what somebody's riding in, you're talking about the usage weight, right? Correct? Right. Yeah, yeah I now got you. Will, I just want to get clear to on this. We need to access the lower part of the bathroom building periodically for maintenance of the clevis toilet. Oh yeah, 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 sure, sure. And that's so that's a little wider in there. That's a little yeah. That's like staff. The staff has to you know yeah. maybe do a lot of things. But yeah. yes. And so yeah, and yeah. so that and there is a maintenance. There, one of the paved paths that goes down by the bathroom, down to the overlook, and then up and through the say up through the meadow, across the ridge line there. Yeah, there and then up exactly. So that could potentially be function as a maintenance. Uh, as a maintenance drive, it's wide enough they could just barely slip through with a pickup truck. Yep, but that that's, that would be for maintenance. That would be for staff, and that's yeah, staff have only. Yeah, yeah vehicles mm -hmm. stop at the end of the parking lot. Yeah, no and, and and how will you in, no how will we stop by? Will you put bollards or something? Yeah, uh, in the middle of it to stop bicycles yeah, and. Yep, we have bollards. We have a sort of a we have a, a bit of a lip at the end of the parking lot, sort of a curved lip there, so people can't get past okay. it. And uh, yeah, several layers of uh, um, of protection. How about signage? Uh, you know, we'd rather let the design speak for it rather than having a lot of signs out here. There will be yep. signs. There's a kiosk right there at the end of the parking lot for information about the site. Um, you know, and whatever necessary signage for like the crosswalk of Bruce Freeman, but other than that, we'd really like to keep this looking natural and let the site I design think, guide I people's think, use. I think minimal signage is important. To a dirt bike or a curb looks like an invitation. <laughs> Point well taken. Is that from experience, Nick? It's from observation. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I thank you for your answers to my questions. Does any, the commissioners have any other thoughts? I, just, I, I think we're- Nick, I just want to make a couple of points about the- uh, Okay, the, Nick first, then Judy. Go ahead, Nick. About okay. the barn. Um, I think it would be very helpful uh, to further the purpose of the barn and the, the site and its, its intended purpose to have some clear statements about how the barn is going to be used and what's allowed and what's not allowed. For instance, you know, encouraging nature and recreational activities related in the use of the barn to allow family gatherings, possibly to prohibit things like renting the barn out to companies or organizations that want to just have a party and possibly precluding certain behaviors such as caterers bringing in food. I think those are things that need to be considered for the whole management of the site. Can I just say um, part of that is dictated by the Board of Health. And so the type of barn that we're building is not allowing caterers. We're not going to have um, running water. We have a Clivus composting toilet. And so there's a lot of regulatory issues that um, uh, we certainly can develop a plan for it, but they wouldn't be allowed even if we wanted to, which is how we designed it. We designed it so that um, we couldn't have the things that you just mentioned. And so- I, I, uh, Kate, I ran a business that did catering uh, and we had a form of catering where we just dropped things off. It didn't require any kitchen facilities or anything. So I think you have to be clear about that. 
you, you, you don't know all of the ways. Uh, you, it's possible to do it so that the Board of Health wouldn't be involved. We, we have actually talked about this at length. I think probably it sounds like we need to huddle with, with Ryan and Kate to put together uh, you know, sort of an outline form of, of, of the utilization plan. And yep. uh, it, as, I, you know, as Kate said, some of that is, is code driven. It's certainly, uh, that certainly will have a lot to do with the occupancy permit that is granted for the building uh, through the board you know, and the Board of Health. So uh, I think we, we'll just put that together so that those questions are answered. Yeah, that's, I think, Robert, I think it's, a, I think it's just a task that once done uh, would help yep. a great deal of, you know, sort of giving people a sense that we've got control of what got we're it. doing here. Got it. Uh, Judy, you had some thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I had a question. This is related to um, the timing and your submission. It looks, uh, as I recall, starting the work in August. And I know that um, this project, I think this project has come before the CPC. And my, so my question is, is how much of this work within our jurisdictional area is uh, hopefully going to be funded by uh, the CPC um, warrant article? Last year we so were, or this current year, we have $200,000 um, $200, from CPC. And uh, once we have town meeting, hopefully in September, um, the warrant includes an additional 500. And is that, so the work that's within the jurisdiction is, uh, is contingent on the passage of that article, is that correct? No, because the work that we applied for through CPC is for the composting toilets and the pathways that connect to the Bruce Freeman. And so that is with, that's beyond so we have. So you the, can get started. You can correct. get started. We have, the, we have the funds right okay. now to get started. We have a 1.4 to get started. The, the okay. Current, and you had the funds to complete the work that's proposed in this application that's within the NRC jurisdiction. Is that correct? Within the jurisdiction, yes. Not yeah. the composting toilets or the complex. Right. Surrounding. Yeah. Correct. Okay, great. Yeah, I couldn't remember how many of these trails were part of the application. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, now the the, okay. the the septic would come in that phase, that 500 phase. Is that the thinking? Is that why it's not in front of us? Yeah. And not in front it's of. It's a gray uh, water uh, leach field, so it's not necessarily the same thing as a conventional septic. But yes, it would be included in the in the building of the Clivus. Yeah. So basically, we have a project that is going to go out to bid for the majority of the the majority, if not all, of the site work for the trails, parking, roads, and everything. And the hope is once we, you know, get the clearances locally is that that goes out to bid and the funds are in the bank. Um, and and that, that project at 1.4 is, uh, is you know, uh, once all permissions are, are taken care of, that, that goes out to bid and into construction late summer, early fall. And that is to go, you know, through next year. And then with the passage of additional funding through, I think, the CPC, um, uh, in, in a town meeting in September to, for the balance of the funds, which is basically allocated to the building complex primarily. And so that, and that, then that project, once it's funded, that can go out to bid as a set, probably as a separate bid package. So the construction is, is for, uh, for everything that you see within your review zones is all covered by the construction that we'd like to begin later, you know, later this summer. Thank you. Um, I think if there's no other commissioner questions, we've got we've spent over an hour on this. I'd like to get public comment if there is any out there. And I think we'll do this again and hopefully have a shorter meeting. But if you could come with a little bit of that, and, and if we have any other questions, we'll try to get them to you. But given the fact we have six other items tonight, I think we've you, you realize that we, we're really looking for something that will sort of put our minds at ease in terms yeah. of making sure that- You've been very gracious with your time for us. Thank you so much. No problem at all. Uh, we'd love to do it. So I'm, I'm gonna, if, if anyone out is out there, if you go to the bottom of your screen and you hit on participant, um, you're able to, let's see, who we got up there raising their hands, anybody? Nobody so far. That's how good a job you did, Robert. Yeah. Oh. 
Hopefully I didn't put Not you, Kate. We're going to give it to Robert. He's getting the big bucks on that. <laughs> or, else, or else people are going to the refrigerator to get a cold one. Right, right. So I usually wait a few seconds because ex exactly it could happen. Somebody's left the room, but they can hear. I'm just going to, I just want to wait a couple of seconds to make sure. Other than that, why don't we, why don't we continue this if this is all right with you folks? Um, uh, any new information that you wanted to give us would have to what, be in by Friday, Delia, to come up uh, at the next meeting. Uh, but um, I'm not sure you have any, you know, it would take you longer to powwow on on I think what you need to work out. So I don't know whether you want to continue for one meeting or two, but I, you, it's your call, of course. I think really the only burning question on our part was uh, the question about the surveying of the trees. And I think um, what I'm hearing from you is that you may not require us to do a survey of every tree that's over six inches. But if you could come up with a plan that makes sense yeah. to avoid that, I think we okay. could listen to that plan. Yeah. And if you could come up to a, if you could come up with just some thinking of, of going forward with a management uh, that how Ryan, and I'm sure if he starts thinking about it, it, you know, I'm no, not a 50 page document for goodness sakes, but just some bullets of here's how we plan on managing the site. So the resource area, we can feel as confident as we can uh, that uh, it won't get degraded. That's it's it's I think those are the, the two mm. monkeys on your back. Right. Unless the commissioners have other thoughts. Uh, seeing no inquiries, if you don't mind, I'm going to push it off. When would you like to continue to? Next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the general <laughs> General Patton says June three. So that means we'll continue so we that. Thank then. you very much, folks. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right, moving, I'd like to say right along, but that took a while, didn't it? 20 Bow Street. Um, what, who is here uh, speaking uh, to this? It's DEP file number 1371518. David Fisher, I assume. Yes. David, David Fisher. Fisher here. Hi, Dave. Hello, Greg, how are you? Fine. Um, <laughs> All right. This is David. We know where Bow Street is. Uh, it, just give us a little quick um, synopsis of what you're doing. It seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, just to introduce David and Sarah Wiener, they're the, the owners of the property. And oh, hi. With hi. Us tonight hi. Um, is also uh, Gregory Legault, who's the architect. Just okay. in case there are any questions on that. Uh, very simply, uh, what we're doing is we are doing proposing work uh, within the 200 foot riverfront zone, uh, within the buffer zone and uh, land bordering, uh, bordering land subject to flooding. Um, it's a rebuild essentially of what is on site today. Uh, so this is the existing conditions and uh, you can see that the uh, wetlands line is on the left hand side. The first red line is the 25 foot uh, no disturb zone. Then we have the 50 foot zone and that cuts just a little bit through the bottom corner of the existing driveway. And then the 100 foot buffer zone clips the front of the house just a tiny bit. So almost 100% of the work that we want to do is within the 100 foot buffer. Um, this the wetland line is to the left of Bow Street completely and Bow Street 42 feet wide, I assume it's 24 feet wide of bituminous paving. And then you have uh, the property that we're uh, hoping to do some work on. Um, also the, um, okay, also the, uh, 200 foot riverfront area is a black dash line just to the mm -hmm. left of the 100 foot um, yep. buffer zone. And mm -hmm. there is also a line that shows up kind of in blue that, uh, yes, Delia's got it. That's the floodplain that comes in here, circles in the existing driveway, and then back out. Uh, that's roughly at a 120.3. Um, 
elevation. And uh, so the, the existing property uh, has been around for many years. David and Sarah, if you want to <laughs> jump in on any of this. And they bought the house a bunch of years ago and have wanted to upgrade the uh, exterior portion of the house, the front where the, the front porch is, and replace the existing concrete block masonry walls, replace the driveway, and repair the existing walkway, which is uh, a brick walkway. It's steep and uh, unsafe. And so uh, this is the plan. And as you can see, at the end of the driveway, that is work that we're proposing to do in the 25 to 50 foot, uh, no disturb. You're not supposed to do any work in that zone whatsoever, but we cannot do any, we can't do this project without doing some of the work in that area. So what we'd like to do is replace the driveway in the exact same configuration that it is. And to the uh, north is to excavate a little bit of the hillside. And it's about 127 uh, square feet of excavation that would allow uh, the owners to park a car in that area, which would be a, a benefit to the town and anybody driving on the road because then they wouldn't have to park a car on the side of the street, could get it off for snow plow clearing operations and that sort of thing. We're proposing to use a dry laid granite cobble in there to try and get as much of the uh, surface water to infiltrate. Um, that granite cobble also extends across the bottom of the driveway. The graphic is not you know, Delia, up at the end of the driveway, down just a little bit, right there. That's also a continuation of granite cobble. So there's an apron before you hit the uh, the bituminous uh, part of the driveway. Um, so this adding, excavating in this area increases some of the flood storage. It's minimal, but it does increase a little bit. Um, I know the commission usually doesn't like to count granite cobble as a an impervious surface but it does allow some water to drain through and then we're redoing the front steps and they come up into the house and the porch um, up in the front we would be removing all of the uh, invasive species on the site on the top side where we're doing excavation, there are uh, there's honeysuckle and uh, Japanese barberry and some other material in there we would take out. We would replace that with native plant material. There are three large uh, honeysuckles that parallel the road. We would take those out also. Um, and why we're, where Delia's little hand is, we're proposing to rebuild the stone wall that's out there uh, just to make it safer and neater and add a set of stairs right in the middle. And those are using large flat stones as steps. Um, not trying to make that a, a formal entry, but more of a, a farmhouse kind of entry that people can go up onto the lawn. Um, and that's really about it. We're uh, trying to Of course, to you know that anything you do in the public way there, you'd have to go to- Yes. DPW, yes, have, yes. that's beyond yeah, our so, bailiwick. Yeah, so I I figured my hope was that we would get some sort of decision from, from you guys, whether yeah. that was okay. Then I would go to uh, yeah. DPW and uh, talk to them about the, the boulders and then replacing sort of a scruffy, uh -huh. grubby area out in front with a, a surface that you could actually put a car on if you wanted to. Right. Um, and uh, so I've got lots of other things I could say, but that's pretty much it. You, no, it, no, I think that nutshell. covers the scope. Do, yep. uh, mm -hmm. do commissioners have any questions in this regard? No. 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 One, one I had, uh, Dave, is this is a very good detailed plan and I can understand it completely. Did you have a, uh, an engineer, a surveyor or a, 
uh, uh, an engineer do the topos and all? How did, how did you arrive yeah. at all that information? Yeah, the, um, uh, we had, we had Stamsky and McNary do the yeah. survey. Yeah, I, I, lots of times when it's, thank you. I, that was David, I assume. Correct. Was the owner, yeah. David. I mean, yeah. the owner, David. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, the big David. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, I'm not sure, Delia, do we need this sign? Should we, should we, it would be nice if Stamsky had put their seal on here, uh, Dave Fisher, because that would uh, put the monkey on their back to justify the, the, the topos I, and, and that sort of thing. Is that possible? I can get you that. We do uh, have that. Yeah, if you could do that. Um, I don't have any other questions. As if no one else in the commission does, I'd like to go to the public uh, because we might be ready to, to to close an issue on this if we could. So I'm going to throw it open to the to the public, um, and we'll we, once again we'll we'll wait a few minutes just to be sure that if somebody's run to the fridge, they can get back. Very difficult for my nature to wait like this. <laughs> we know. I know. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't. Is is telephone number nine seven eight five zero five zero four one six wishing to speak? You that's can write that's up me. I'm, I just moved. That's all. Oh, that's you. Oh, I get you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah when you move. All right. Seeing none. Uh, do we have a motion? Sure, I'll take a motion. Um, Thank you. I'll make a motion to uh, close and issue an order of conditions for DEP file number 137-1518 with findings A, B, C, and D, standard conditions one through 19, and, and special conditions 20 through 55. A second. Uh, Nick seconded that. Um, can I, could I ask that we add one other condition. Are we going to add the condition that Stamsky would, oh. would we need that? So, so could you just make the motion that that motion is contingent upon receipt of revised plans with the engineer stamp by Friday so that the permit can get issued on Friday? Sure. Okay. Delia, do you want a set of four, all of them? And I'll just, or do you just want the- Just email the it to me. Okay. Email it to me and um, two hard copies is fine. The email okay, okay. copy is fine for the issuance. And if you just make that amendment, sure. please. Yes, and I'll amend the motion to include a receipt of a stamped engineer drawing by this Friday. Second again. And two copies. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Although uh, I'll, I'll roll the I'll roll call. Uh, Judy. Aye. Nick. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I'm I as well. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good night. Good night. Uh, moving right along, 261 Park Lane, one three DEP file number 1371523. Who's here moving sheds and kicking chickens out of their uh, home? Hi. Boxman Associates and uh, Zach Cardwell is here, the architect, along okay. with the owners as well. Okay. And so the owners were on. I don't see them now. No, we're still on. We're I still see. Oh, you're here. Oh, oh, okay. There you are. And I'm on as well. We're just ah. together. He had to go rest. <laughs> All right. Where are we? What are we doing here? Quickly. Okay, so uh, the site is approximately uh, 78,000 square feet uh, and resource areas on site are bank, uh, BBW, uh, BLSF, and riverfront area. Uh, I flagged the, uh, the river there with uh, flags one through nine and bank and mean annual high water <clears throat> are coincident along with BBW. Now, uh, BLSF on site is uh, at 121.8 feet. 
and uh, the applicant is proposing to convert the existing garage into a studio, uh, which involves ut utilities, water and sewer, and a service uh, communication conduit and the re relocation of a gas meter. Other proposed work is uh, t removing two existing sheds and replacing them with a single shed and converting an existing chicken coop to a shed. Uh, the chicken coop uh, has a fenced concrete pad off the back of it. This will also be converted to the shed. Uh, the temporary disturbance of all this work will be restored and stabilized to its original state. And all this work has been designed to remain within the existing footprint and disturbed areas. Uh, the closest point of disturbed area is the landscaped lawn, which is directly on the bank of the river. <clears throat> uh, no native vegetation on site is proposed to be removed. Oh, start my video, sorry. And then uh, for the BLSF on site, um, during the demolition and removal of the two sheds, uh, these will only in impact BLSF temporarily uh, and the building debris will be removed immediately. Uh, in addition to the two sheds, excavation are required for the utility conduits and the, the water and sewer line. Uh, no new fill will be brought in uh, <clears throat> and any remaining fill after the utilities are put in will be taken off site and then the driveway will be patched. Uh, there's no work proposed within the 25 foot no disturb zone. There's only a siltation barrier within the 25 to 50 foot buffer zone and then all the work I described occurs in the 50 to 100 foot and the riverfront area. Um, for the chicken coop, uh, we are enclosing the concrete pad, which was not enclosed before. So we're proposing a breakaway floodgate, two of them, to account for this. Can you just explain what that is? Oh, we're yeah. going to see it. Yeah, so I uh, responded to, or sent this off to Delia earlier today. Um, it's just a spec of the, the floodgates, the typical floodgate. Um, this just allows water, if a flood occurs in the area, to go within the structure unimpeded. And this will allow uh, water to fill the building and not impact the floodplain. This will still account for uh, flood storage. Is that is that a choice of why? I don't know anything about this, but it just strikes me that you could just build the building up and put up eight inches of lattice all the way around. The water could just go through and leave and not wet your building. I think. I'm trying to learn sorry. something, and not not necessarily. I'm wasting time. Go ahead, continue. That's what you <laughs> want to do. It's fine. Go ahead. Um, you didn't want to answer, Kyle, so it's okay. <laughs> um. So based on this, uh, all the work, uh, there's no further impacts on site. We're, we're neutral. All the impacts are gonna be temporary in nature. Um, if the commission has any questions or if Zach wants there, to add in any The volume of the, of the shed flood storage, have you, have yeah. you, how, how have you computed that? It's new, right? Uh, we don't have a specific design yet for the shed, but you know, it's, it's going to be some sort of prefabricated thing we envision that is sort of just dropped there. So it's the footprint's about 130 square feet, and it's you know it's going to be eight feet tall, nine feet tall, something like that. But I mean, it's going to take up some part of the. I mean, it's minimal, but you, it, it's traditional that we know that number, so we know what we're allowing in terms of uh, additional a loss of storage if, if in effect that's what we've got here we may not have that here if you do the figures but um, the, so the only loss in flood storage potentially would be the the actual walls is that 
what I'm interpreting from you. So the, sh the shed, where the shed is placed on the, the footprint of the chicken coop, yep. that's, a, that's a volume that would just need to be calculated. Like Greg said, it's a very small amount, but that mm -hmm. is, is a floodplain loss that just needs to be, the numbers need to be captured so that you're- Just acknowledge it and, and give us a math and submit a mathematical equation that just says it's X. It's not gonna be enough. To, okay. uh, it's just a formality that, that we would require of anyone. Sometimes it's a huge amount in this situation. It's, it's quite, quite low, but I think you could just do the calcs and, and you know, on the back of an envelope and it'd be fine. You said no native vegetation would be taken out. I, it, am I hearing that there'd be some vegetation taken out, but it wouldn't be native vegetation that you'd be going after invasives, or did you not mean that? Uh, no vegetation at all. It's, it's okay. strictly okay. pretty much. I just uh, want to clarify. Yeah. Just, just want to clarify. Uh, the, other, the other question I have is, is uh, in terms of timing, Given that seasonally the, the uh, acipit get, gets, uh, gets up around its banks and over a bit uh, on a regular basis and every once in a while, what is the timing? It might be interesting to consider timing of construction here. Do you have any thoughts in that regard? Uh, the, the plan is to move, up, move forward you know, as soon as we get approval for the most part. Um, it's, a, it's a workspace. so. You know the the owner needs a place to work, um, which she doesn't have currently. So it would be done. It said differently, it would be done this building season, which would be well in advance of next spring's flood. Correct. Uh, any other questions from the commissioners? No. No. So it. No. It's, it seems like your your going forward list, Kyle is is um, quite and, and and Zach is quite small. If you could get that information to Delia, it's possible that we could uh, issue next next meeting on the third. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, but I have to hear from the public. Okay, so here we go. Public, please, if anyone out there has anything to say in this regard, uh, give you a couple of minutes to uh, chime in if you. Are just new with us hit uh, participants at the bottom and there's a hand if you hit the hand we will see it I hope would it be I just have a quick question would it be possible to go ahead without the shed can we get approval to start without the shed well we don't have we don't actually have it written up this evening so to be honest with you Alana so uh, the best you could do is to, is to be honest with you is June 3rd at this point. So the, the I, I don't think that's go ahead, start. Delia. So the meeting on June 3rd would just be to close and issue the permit. Nobody would need to attend that hearing. And 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 within a couple of days, you'd have the document, so you would be. Uh, you know, you could probably get that on and. and you know, get going on the eighth. Thank you. It, it, it's probably said differently. If you wanted to talk to contractors and get going in terms of lining it up, that's probably a safe bet to do that. All right. I don't see any public comments. Um, so we'll continue this until the third. All right. Is that all right with Zach and Kyle and the rest? Uh, and at that point, I think we can uh, close an issue. Yep. It's a formality of, of how the world works. Thank you, all of you, and we'll move on. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your time. Yes, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to 188 Fairhaven Road. DE Plot doesn't have a DE file number. Uh, good Please. afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. My name is Jake Bramieu with Hancock Associates. We're representing 188 Fairhaven LLC. Yep. Uh, this is a uh, Two acre site approximately at the at the corner of Concord Turnpike and Fairhaven Road. Uh, right now it contains a, a dilapidated uh, condemned two story building, uh, broken down shed and a uh, couple of cinder block foundations with with nothing standing on them. Uh, the 
proposal here is simply to go in and remove the structures. Um, we'll be shipping all of the, all of what we dig out of the foundations and around there uh, out of the site. Nothing from the site will be reused um, because there are invasive species there. We're not, we're not uh, proposing removal of any trees or, or any existing vegetation at all. Really the site is basically right next to the street. It's 25 foot from the right of way edge. Um, there's not any major trees between the roadway and the existing dwelling or garage. Uh, there is some low vegetation there, which will be left in place as, as much as possible. Um, so basically, the proposal is just to remove the two-story building, garage, um, freestanding foundations, and ship a clean fill that's free of any inv further invasives, and uh, fill in the holes, and that's it. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, what, what's your What's your plan? What are you What are you using? You say fill in the holes. What What are you talking about in terms of uh, fill? So we'll be, um, we're not gonna use anything taken off the site for backfill uh, as it's gonna have, it might have invasives in it. Uh, everything will be clean material brought in, you know, free of any waste or hazardous materials and, and most of all invasive species. So uh, we'll, we'll be shipping in fill. Okay, gra you know, just gravel or something of that nature. Yeah, just, just uh, gravel. Uh, now we do require on our plans you may not have uh, be aware of it there's we need a 50 foot uh, on our plans because it's it's part of our policy and jurisdiction uh, it's a diff differentiation so we require a, uh, obviously the flags and then a 25 that's 50 and 100 we don't require 75 as it does not demarcate any individual change so if you would uh, just edit your plan uh, and, and put that 50 on there, that would complete the plan in, in an acceptable format, I think. Yep, we've, uh, we've already gotten some preliminary comments from the town, so uh, that's one of the things that we've already added to the revised plan that we'll be submitting. Okay. okay. Um, the commission have any other questions? No, not me. No. Okay. Nope. Uh, so it's your thinking. Um, it's your thinking that you can get in and out of there pretty much straight from the road. Uh, it is requested by staff that you would have have your guys know that we'd like them to brush the machinery off so that they don't carry invasives down to the next job site. That would be. Yep, we'll have a note on the. Uh, that would be appreciated. Be cleaned every day after work, and I don't know if you guys can see this on my camera, but basically, that's the view from the street. You can see the dilapidated building right from the street. There's no yeah, I know exactly where it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's it's a sad old building. No. Um, all right. If no other questions, um, public. I think somebody had something to say. In the public, public question. Yeah, I'm going to the public right now, but I just want to be sure nobody had. All right. Uh, going to the public, please. If you had any thoughts or questions, please uh, raise your hand, and uh, I'd love to see. Uh, Wait a second or two here. We won't rush into it. All right. I don't see anything. I mean, it, it seems, Jacob, that uh, if you can get that 50 on there and uh, stipulate that they'll clean their machines off and that sort of jazz in terms of a management plan, um, we might be able to. You'd have to get that in by Friday to be right. voted we, on. We've already, made, we've already made the revision, so we'll have the plans in tomorrow probably. Uh, uh, all right. Well, then we'll continue until the third. Does that work for you? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. I'll see you. Uh, we'll, we'll see you at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You do the same. Uh, moving right along, 1134 Main Street. Once again, it does not have a DEP file number. Um, Who's here on in regards to this project? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. This is Alan Roscoe. I'm from Core State School. Uh, Alan, I can barely hear you. All right. How about now? 
it's better. Okay. Uh, good evening, folks. Um, good evening. Alan Roscoe from Core States Group. Uh, by way of introduction, um, I'll just let you know that the property owner is um, signed on, uh, Joe Tomiano. Um, so he may or may not chime in, but if you have specific questions for him, um, he is available. And I'll also introduce um, a member of our project team is uh, Greg Hockmuth from Williams and Sparagi. He's our wetland scientist for the project. And um, so with that, I'll just go back uh, a little bit of history on the site. Um, this is 1134 Main Street. It's at the Northwest intersection of uh, Main Street and Baker Avenue. Uh, it's a half an acre site. And um, it was developed early um, in the 80s um, and is currently the um, former Citizens Bank uh, property. Sure. Um, so uh, our plan um, with the regulatory changes that have come forward, um, our plan has a lot of challenges. Um, we have bordering land subject to flooding that covers most of the property at this point based on the changes in the mapping and uh, 2013. Uh, and we also have um, riverfront zones, which are from uh, a tributary and from the Assabet River itself. Um, I mean, why, don't we, why don't we start uh, on um, C7, Delia, please? It might be the best option. There we go. Uh, so this uh, is our site plan with the wetland buffer and resource areas superimposed. Um, so you can see that uh, we've got some challenges here with the uh, riparian zones and um, the bordering land subject to flooding, which exists up to elevation 125, which is just about at the intersection. So there's not a lot of um, non floodplain property um, that we have to deal with. So um, we were proposing to demolish the uh, Citizens Bank um, building. It's about 1,300 square feet and uh, construct a new facility. It will be a full service branch, 2,200 square feet, as we've shown here on our drawing. And uh, it'll have uh, accessible ramps and sidewalks from the right of way uh, and from the parking area so that customers can uh, utilize the bank. Um, but we had a lot of goals here uh, for this project is um, number one, to reduce impervious cover. Um, obviously the big challenge is to compensate for the floodplain loss um, due to the work. Um, we wanted to reuse the existing utilities to the extent that we could and also reuse the existing drainage system that exists on the site uh, and currently drains out to a uh, municipal drain line out in Main Street. Uh, so I think we've um, met all of those goals with this design. And, um, you know, the, the big thing that we want to take away from this is that there'll be no new encroachment um, towards the uh, resource areas. We're, we're going to limit our uh, work activity to areas that have already been altered and disturbed and uh, obviously would we'll be providing erosion controls to protect uh, drainage systems and uh, adjoining properties. Um, so trying to summarize that, that's our uh, project in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Hawkmuth or myself, um, I'd be happy to take them at this time. Um, in ter I mean, our, I, I guess in terms of um, what our interest here is clearly the floodplain and you've got a larger building. Um, yeah, do you have calcs on what the, and you said you've, you've, you've exacerbated, you've lessened the impervious. Do you have calcs on that? Can you submit those to us? I didn't see that. Uh, yes, we have information on the plan and I, I got a note from Delia. Um, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, we do have to better document um, how we've gotten to the uh, compensation that we've arrived at, but um, 
you know, we've done a, a one foot incremental analysis and uh, yeah. we'll provide yeah. that information for you. Yeah, we would we would need that, of course, so we, we, we feel confident we know we're yeah, all on the same page. It's Have a very you... tight site, and um, but we worked hard to try to reduce the um, impervious cover just so we could take advantage of the redevelopment. Uh, options. Now, now you've, you've, uh, your intent is to keep the, the existing um, drainage stormwater st structures uh, and they do drain into the town system. Uh, have, you, have you had somebody examine those to be sure that they are functioning as designed? Literally looked at the system. Could you explain that system just a little bit as to other retention uh, catch basins? What, what, what's just a little bit of description of what that's all about. Yeah, the uh, existing parking lot is um, drained with a series of networked catch basins into a drain manhole uh, before it's discharged out to the street uh, drainage system. Um, so the back parking lot, uh, I think we can preserve the function of that. And then any catch basins that don't have gas traps, uh, we'll install those, but we'll do an inspection if you'd like of uh, the existing. I, don't you think that's the prudent thing to do before Absolutely. you Absolutely. Yeah, you go forward and you find out, oh my gosh, I made an assumption. It was an error. Let's get all the, let's get everything done and buttoned up. So we're, we're confident once we issue that we don't have uh, uh, some, to backpedal on something. You know? Yeah, and, and if anything requires me, maintenance or, or clean outs, you know, we Yeah, would... I mean, you know, just say, yeah, we sent out Herbie, Herbie from Herbie's, you know, stormwater clean out company. Uh, where are you with the zoning board on this? Now, it, it, clearly it's a ZBA issue. Yeah, this is in the um, West Concord Business District and the uh, Floodplain Conservancy overlay. So, yeah, we, we will have to go to zoning. We thought the logical first step was to uh, address these issues with you folks uh, yeah. first, and then uh, take the next step and go to zoning and planning. Yeah, yeah. that's that's where I'm. That's where I'm at right now. Does any of the other commissioners have any thoughts or questions? No. No. Ed. No. Uh, Delia, do you have anything to add before I go public? I, I would just add that. Um, since you're submitting this to the ZBA, it's sort of a concurrent process with NRC, and typically the NRC will keep their hearing open in case planning or ZBA has changes that um, require changes to the NRC's plan. So it's fine to start with the NRC, but the process will sort of go through at least the planning board's meeting to make sure that there aren't footprint changes to the plans that would change okay. NRC's review. Understood. That's kind of what I meant. I'm sorry I didn't define that well enough. That was a that was the genesis of my question about the ZBA, but we would not move to finalize this without ZBA, because we might have to change something. Um, all right, seeing no other comments, let's go to the neighborhood, the public, whoever would like to speak. You could hit the participant, uh, and it should kick out. Uh, hit the hand, and it should show. Just give them a few minutes. I don't see any comments. Do you, Delia? Uh, no hands are up. No hands are up. Last call for hands. Seeing none, um, we could, Alan, you know, go off until the third. I'm looking at my calendar, uh, but I doubt you'd have any. Well, you can get back to us whatever you want to in terms of, you know, checking out the the, the stormwater issues and stuff. But you may want to extend out a bit more. But you can always go to the third and continue if 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 you have no reason to come. It's completely up to you. But when would you like to continue this to? Uh, yeah, I think I would like to uh, stay on top of this. So um, if we could extend to the third and then, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, but just in fairness to you, you sure. uh, and Joe, you, you understand that we're probably going to be nowhere then in terms of finalizing it because of the ZBA. 
but at least if we could address the plan issues. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. You're more than welcome. More than welcome. I just didn't want you to come here with an expectations of, of any finality. Um, oh, no, no, no. We in, this probably this, is not going to happen. The gray hair shows is not my first video. <laughs> <radio>, so, <laughs> exactly. Um, I assume yeah, that. understood. We got to get the file number and... Uh, and I didn't know if there was a, a reason to have a site visit with, with some of you folks um, just to go and uh, do a walk through. It might be, it, if, 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 let us know if ZBA is requiring one. Um, I don't know what Delia feels, but we'd have to post if it were more than two of us. Uh, but I don't The other option is that commissioners could visit the property um, individually. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm more than familiar with it. It's in plain sight down there. We have, uh, thanks to a former owner, that we have a, a, an access to the river right behind you there. We're very familiar with your location. It, it's not the former owner, it's the owner. Oh, thank you then. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, thank you for taking care of your generosity. I appreciate that. Um, so I think we're quite familiar with the property, but if anybody wants to, you wouldn't mind if somebody stopped in there and looked at it should they want to. Uh, Lynn Huggins, who wasn't on this, she may want to do that. If it's okay, with you, we'll let her know that it's all right. Is that okay, Joe? Positively okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, then let's continue to the third, and we'll address that as we get closer. Good. Thank right. you very, very well. You'd have very to good. have, by the way, you know, would they have to have it in by the by Friday? Then oh, those calcs and everything to come, to be eligible to come up on the third. Okay. Just a timing thing, Alan. Understood. Okay. You can talk to Delia tomorrow morning and she explain all that. But. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. Thanks. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Where am I? I am now at 42 Shore Drive. PPP. Oh, no file number. Who what? do we have? Molly Windorf. With it's, it's, getting, it's getting late, Molly. You know that. I know. It's it's already right. past my bedtime, but hey. Here we go. We got we um, do have a white pond. We also in the southern part of Concord. All right. Yes. Let's get on what we need to talk about. All right. Um, I am representing the homeowner Diane Reynolds, and the property is located at Forty Shore Drive. Um, and there is bank on the property associated with White Pond. Um, and the, the project goals very simply consist of the replacement of the two sets of stairs that go down to the dock, um, as well as the replacement of the dock. Um, and so there will be no expansion of any disturbed area. It will all be within the existing footprints. Um, and the stairs are now currently pressure treated wood. Um, and they will be replaced with pressure treated wood. So the materials will remain the same as well. Um, and I did receive comments from Colleen and Delia. Um, and it's much, much appreciated that we, we got those beforehand. Um, so one of which was to provide adequate erosion controls um, for the dock. So we will be adding to the plan um, what we call a silt curtain. Um, which is helpful in any water um, if there is any. So we will be adding that to the plan. Additionally, they've also asked for um, a construction sequence. So I've asked the contractor to provide one. Um, so we will be able to submit one of those with the updated plan as well. Um, and there was a question about heavy equipment. There will be no heavy equipment here. It will all be just hand done um, and no stockpiling of materials is required either. Those will be removed from site immediately. Um, and I will also specify in the plan, you know, any reseeding of any disturbed areas, um, though there won't be any disturbed areas, but I'll, I'll add a note to the plan on that as well. Um, and then there were a couple special conditions. Um, there is an existing order of conditions on the site currently. So we will be submitting a certificate of compliance to close that one out. Um, and also obtaining a chapter 91 license for the dock work, um, specifically for the dock work and not, not the stairs. So if the commission has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, 
Uh, have you filed anything with the endangered species? Uh, yes, yep, they've received the notice in the plan, so they're aware. Um, it is all within existing area, but they, you know, they will provide a letter, so. Yeah. Now, you, the, the material, I mean, it's a steep slope there, as we all know, it's a kettle yep. pond. Um, you're going to pretty much use the access up and down in the same way, uh, you know, the way you walk down, you got to walk back with the, and carry exactly. the stuff out. I mean, that's, yep. I, yep. I don't want that job, but that's <laughs> someone's got to do it. <laughs> it's not going to be you or me. Um, do you intend uh, it would be advisable, and I don't know as we need to set this as a requirement, but it would be advisable to probably do this clearly in the dry season? I mean, if, I, I don't think, we, does any of the commissioners think we need that as a, as, a, as a criteria? I don't think so, but I think just advice wise. <laughs> Just, these is, are just is, my uh, thoughts. I wrote to make sure that there isn't any erosion. Is that what you're thought? Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking in the spring when the water is really high down by the down by the dock, and mm -hmm. you know, spring rains. It's you know, can be a deluge, but I suppose a, 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 a thunder shower in August can also be damaging from that all standpoint. Right. You know, I imagine yeah. you know all the work will be done. Um, pretty swiftly and quickly, especially the yeah. stairs work, which is where the erosion would be. Um, right. So I imagine that it'll, it'll be removed and replaced probably in the, in the same day, so. Now the pilings that are holding that staircase, are they, are they pre-existing concrete pillars? I, what I there? believe they are, yeah. Right. Um, and I'm not sure if, if those will be kept or if they'll be replaced, but there won't, there won't be any more intrusion or um, anything like that, and I believe I believe the existing ones are being kept, but I can I so. can confirm with the contract. I would think so. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Anyone else have any thoughts? No. Judy, Ed. No. No. Delia. No. I go to the public for one last round. I hope this muting thing works for the public. I have, we haven't had a public comment all day. I'll just wait it out here just in case. Although we kind of know all the players. I just want to say that we can we can hear you and respond. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you. <laughs> that was Sarah actually. <laughs> oh Sarah. Oh Diane right above you in my screen said something as well. Her very light came up. Thank you, Sarah. Hello? Carmen? Yes. Did you have something to say? I did. Um, Carmen Jacquier, 38 Shore Drive, next door neighbor. Yeah. Um, you couldn't have a better workman doing this job. Kevin Kelly did the exact same thing for us. We had a failed stairway from the deck to the pond about five years ago. So he's very familiar with all your um, with the needs that you have. In fact, he ran the building of our house 11 and a half years ago at 38 Shore Drive. So you couldn't have a workman better acquainted with the situation. Well, a Yelp, a Yelp thing right on the, <laughs> right on Zoom. Thank you, Carmen. That was appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Any other public comments? Seeing none, uh, I guess, you know, the, you, 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 the work's in front of you, Molly. I don't know if you can get it in by Friday. If you, we could then act on the third. Do you want to continue to the third and give it a shot by Friday? Yes, definitely. All right, so we'll continue to the third and we'll see how you make out to get everything in. Great. All right, thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. Uh, moving along for the commission, uh, we have two uh, COCs. I need a motion on both. If I could get a motion, we could push this along. I make a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for 260 and Notice Mac Hill Road, DEP file 137488, and to issue a certificate of compliance for 40 McMillan, DEP file 137270. Look at that number, folks, 270. Uh, do I have yeah. a second? Second. Um, all right, let's poll. Ed, I'll all say right. yes. Aye. Judy? Aye. Nick? Aye. 
And I'm I as well, it's unanimous and the CLCs are issued. And that brings us to uh, adjournment. So what do we say? Ooh, ooh, this is a tough one, guys. Is there an administrative approval? Or is that not on the agenda? That was not we. That was on the original, but not on tonight's agenda. Okay. It was taken okay, off. Sorry. As was okay. the meeting make minutes. Make as was the minutes, and as was uh, director's report. As we we were not doing a director's report unless we really have to uh, at this point. Okay. Uh, just because they don't want us to, I guess. Sure. Or, or okay. we don't want make to hear failure anymore. Account. We're tired. So, do I have a motion? I made a motion to adjourn. A second. Uh, I got to poll it. Ed? Aye. Judy? Aye. Nick? Aye. And I'm aye as well. So that's announced. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much for your time this evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.